SCP-093 Red Sea Object Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures See Testing Document SCP-093-T1 for outline of testing conditions. SCP-093 must remain on a mirror at all times and under video surveillance. Admittance into the area of SCP-093's containment must be authorized only with proper video recording and subject retrieval procedures in place. Any attempt to use SCP-093 outside of an approved test will be dealt with severely, up to and including termination. Description SCP-093 is a primarily red disc carved from a stone composite resembling cinnabar with circular engravings and unknown symbols carved at 0.5 cm depth around the entire object. Deeper cuts are present on SCP-093 with a depth of 1 to 1.5 cm. SCP-093 is 7.62 cm in diameter and fits comfortably into most palms without abrasion. SCP-093 will change hue when held by a living individual. The colors taken by SCP-093 are still being researched to establish a link. Current belief holds that the changes depend upon regrets carried by the holder. If SCP-093 is removed from a mirror and not held by a person, it will seek out the nearest mirror-like surface. SCP-093 has been observed to travel in the largest possible circle while rolling, building up phenomenal speed. The mechanism of this acceleration is currently unknown. If an obstacle is between SCP-093 and the nearest mirror-like surface, it will use this momentum to punch through the obstacle and continue on its course at this speed. It will only stop when a mirror-like surface is contacted. Despite tremendous impact velocities, no damage will be dealt to SCP-093 or the mirror. Additional Notes no records exist to clarify the nature of SCP-093's discovery or presence in the Foundation. See SCP-093-OD. Since no records exist explaining SCP-093's method of containment, a test procedure was initiated to establish why mirrors must be used to contain it. The results of SCP-093-T1 led to the discovery of living beings holding SCP-093 being able to move through mirrors and a series of tests in SCP-093-T2 to ascertain the destination reached through this travel. SCP-093 Original Documentation Item Number SCP-093 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Item SCP-093 is to be kept on a silver-lined mirror on a 0.3 by 0.23 meter pedestal at least 1.22 meters off the ground floor in containment cell block. Object is not to be contained in areas exceeding 3.66 by 3.05 meters, nor placed on mahogany, pine, cherry, or aluminum pedestals above or below level 1 of containment cell block. Object can be handheld safely, albeit gently, without consequences. Tests and consequences thereof involving containment conditions can be viewed in Section B-35-1 of the attached report. Description Object was found on the shore of the Red Sea on January 30th, 1968, emitting a low sigh and a dim blue gleam. Its color has since turned into an orange mix of red only emitting a hum of varying volume whilst in the presence of female examiners of ages between 34 and 41. SCP-093 resembled the documented blue for 54 minutes 34 seconds at 1.23 on April 26, 1986 coincidentally when the body of 1949834 was discovered in research facility Ties between 1949834 and SCP-093 remain inconclusive, 
and effects of prolonged exposure to 093 remain unknown except for infrequent reports of periods of calmness and in the case of 2420049 as periodic waves of depression, loss of balance, and thoughts of suicide. These feelings have reportedly not exceeded 11 days in duration. Objects seem to react to the presence of 2420056 by turning light violet for no more than 2 minutes and 9 seconds, as documented on March 12, 1993. Effects of this reaction remain unknown. Additional Notes Origins of 093 remain unknown, and documents of recovery of 093 have since been destroyed in a fire in research facility December 9, 1989. Reports on the feelings of researchers who handled 093 have remained inconsequential since April 19, 1995. SCP-093-T1 Containment Test Testing of SCP-093 against conditions set forth for existing containment procedures to assess viability of continuing such containment, beginning with changing the type of mirror used as a position of rest. Mirrored surface, brass frame, retail grade mirror. SCP-093 rests without activity when placed on the mirror. This test alone removes the need for costly silver or wooden containment systems. Standard Grade Table SCP-093 turns upright and begins to roll across the table surface in one direction, making a U-turn and rolling to the other, completing an oval shape and repeating this action until a mirror is brought into vicinity of it, at which time SCP-093 rolls toward the mirror and lays flatways against it, sliding towards the center. It is noted that despite the grainy feel of SCP-093, it does not mark the mirror in any fashion while moving across it. Two mirrors at either end of a standard grade table. SCP-093 gravitates toward the closest mirror regardless of orientation and makes no distinction between different types of mirrors, favoring a factor of distance above all else in choosing the mirror to move to. A mirror held by a person and moved around SCP-093 follows the mirror as it moves, gaining speed until a maximum velocity of <laughs> meters per second is reached. At any velocity, the impact of SCP-093 against a mirrored surface results in no damage to either object. A person holding SCP-093 placing it on a mirror. This test was accidental, the result of one of the staff tripping another after some debate about who would be covering the lunch tab. As a result of the behavior of the researchers, it was discovered that a person holding SCP-093 and placing it against a mirror will in fact move into the mirror. Addendum Containment testing discontinued after establishing that SCP-093 requires only a mirror to rest inert. Testing on human interaction with mirrors while holding SCP-093 authorized by Dr. B. SCP-093-T2 Mirror Test Testing Protocols Subjects testing SCP-093 must wear a Class 3 buckle harness strapped to the chest and attached to a tension pulley system, allowing for 300 meters of movement. Additional spools may be added to extend movement if necessary. The clasps connecting these spools must be high grade and capable of withstanding applied force of 0.2 tons. A field kit containing the following should be standard issue for testing of SCP-093. One wrist-mounted light source with three hours of lifespan and additional power sources providing up to six additional hours. 4 half-liter water bottles with water, 4 MREs of any type, plus 2 plain granola bars, chocolate chips allowed, 1 standard issue Beretta 9mm firearm with 24 rounds of ammunition loaded. This is not to be issued until subject has passed into a mirror using SCP-093 and should be given under armed supervision, ensuring that the subject passes through entirely. This item is to be requisitioned first upon subject's return and subject to be made aware of this before leaving line of sight within SCP-093's mirror. 
one standard issue field knife. The subject is not to be made aware of this item and must find it on his own within the kit. The subject must also be attached to a video system with a camera mounted on the subject's head or shoulders. The video device should be cable-based and allow for the same length of travel as the return system. Wireless cameras have shown mixed results and should only be used in testing conditions where SCP-093 is a currently known color. New colors must be tested using wired feed. During testing, the color of SCP-093 must be recorded, as well as history of the subject in terms of their incarceration to identify how SCP-093 determined the color to assume. A link appears to be connected to guilt or a lack thereof in the subject's psyche. The attached test results should be read in order. SCP-093 Blue Test Mirror Test 1 Color Blue Subject is D-20384, male, 34 years of age, strong physique. Subject's background shows instance of murder and attempted suicide. Subject is cooperative in all steps of testing. Subject entered the provided mirror while holding SCP-093, which emitted a blue color. Outside technicians observed that the mirror retained a true reflection until subject had completely passed into it, at which time, the view changed to an outdoor landscape, heavily tinged in blue. Video feed follows in attached media. Camera activates, flickers to view. Subject is looking out over the same field reported by technicians. Looks like typical lowland plains. Everything has a heavy blue tinge overlapping the normal colors. No discernible landmarks visible as subject pans view left to right. Only grass, weeds, and a breeze moving the taller grass. No trees. No living beings visible. Subject moves forward as instructed, traveling for approximately 500 steps before something becomes visible. A patch of the land up ahead is barren, and grass can be seen dying as subject approaches it. Approximately 300 steps forward, subject is standing before a hole in the ground. The hole has been dug using unknown tools of primitive origin. Pulley system engaged, and the camera suffers a light shutter. Subject is instructed to enter the hole, and after mild protesting, agrees to do so. There is no apparent method of descent, such as a ladder or rope. Subject relies entirely on his own hands and the pulley system to slow the descent. Approximately 100 meters of cable is used before the bottom is reached. Light source provided in field kit activated 50 meters down when outside sources become unreliable. Sweeping gestures of the light reveal nothing more than dirt even at the bottom of the hole. Subject moves forward with assistance of light source. Asked about the blue tinge, subject expresses confusion and says there is no such tinge from his perspective and never was. Light is visible down the passage and 150 meters of cable has been used. Out of the camera's eye, sound is recorded of a firearm being prepared. When questioned about these actions, subject states justified precaution and moves forward. The tunnel turns from bare dirt to a concrete enclosure. Subject complains of a stench. The light source is revealed to be ceiling light fixtures, a series of which with less than a quarter broken while the others function. A series of six doors, three to a side, span before the camera view with a seventh door visible at the end of the corridor that has been blocked by what looks like generic metal shelving debris. Debris shows signs of rusting and is typical of retail store units, suggesting other human presences. Subject requested to try doors in whatever order he chooses. Subject tries the first door on the right, doors locked does not open. Second door tries to open but does not budge, unlocked but blocked. Closing second door, third door is tried, same result as first. Going up the other side, the third door does open fully and light is bright in the room. Portable light switched off at this time as subject pans camera to inspect room. Room is bare, no contents, but walls are filthy. Subject states material on walls isn't dirt, but he can't identify it. Seems to resemble melted plastic but is brown in color rather than black. Door is closed. Second door on the left has no handle. 
does not move when pushed. The hole where the handle was is plugged by an unknown material. All doors are shaped in such a way that nothing can visibly escape from the sides and space for movement is too thin to look through, even at ground level. First door on left hand is locked, but part of the key is present in lock from stem to the ridges. The back has been broken off. With effort, subject manipulates key to open door and immediately begins coughing, complaining of a stench. Walls of room are clean, as is floor. Ceiling is coated with the same strange brown material as the third room. In this room, there is a makeshift cot made from aged blankets and a pillow, a wooden crate containing open boxes of what appears to have been foodstuff. Language appears on video as squiggles, however subject states they simply read cereal. A second crate in the room contains what appear to be empty water bottles that have dried out. A book lays next to the cot, closed, no title or identifying marks. On the wall is what appears to be clipped articles, but language cannot be read. Subject asked to remove clippings for retrieval. All articles but one crumble at the touch due to age. The intact article is put in a field sample container and seemed the most recent compared to the others. Asked to investigate the book, subject begins to move toward it. Audio on the tape goes strange, and a high-pitched screeching noise like grinding metal dominates all communication for 3.5 seconds. Subject has not touched the book still, and when the noise stops, subject asks Control to repeat request. Control made no requests during that time as headsets were removed. Subject advised to leave room and notes that the door has begun closing slowly on its own and if left alone, will close. Subject advised to leave door alone and to investigate door on the right. Careful review of the following 10 seconds of tape shows that as the camera pans, a figure is visible at the end of the tunnel where the seventh door is. The door is open only enough for a face to be seen through a crack just before the door silently closes. No details can be seen. Subject investigates the second door on the right with no mention of anything seen out of the ordinary. This door, when pushed against, moves, and after repeated bashing, moves enough to view inside at an angle. A cork board is visible with more articles attached to it. The top of a box of cereal can be seen on the floor, and what appears to be a hand laying palm up. Subject closes the door and pans camera past door 7, which remains closed. Seeing nowhere else to explore, subject requested to return. Subject poses no protest and complains of ever-increasing stench. As subject returns back down the tunnel, his camera feed does not change or show anomaly, but control reports a sudden surge in cable movement, pulling an additional 100 meters of cable through before going slack again and then tightening. Video feed shows subject ascending tunnel slowly while control attempts to verify integrity of the pulley system. Subject requested to stop ascent, but states he is not climbing. The rope is pulling him up. Panic sets in on both sides, and subject informed to ready firearm. Upon reaching top of hole, nothing is visible on camera, and subject reports nothing has changed in the landscape, then begins a return trip following the path of the cable. Traveling for approximately 900 steps, subject asks how much cable he has used. Control admits they are unsure due to complications, but subject traveled in a straight line to reach the hole, so it should be a straight line back. Subject becomes concerned when he states that more cable is visible now, moving in a 90 degree angle away from a point in the ground. Subject pans camera around full circle slowly. On film, behind subject, a crowd of 37 countable figures stand silently. Features are unidentifiable, and they are lacking the blue tinge that dominates the landscape. Panic breaks in control again, but subject notes only oddity as being the cable having an angled path. Subject tugs his end of the cable. It is taut and does not move. Subject begins to reel in the pulley system and slack rapidly winds. Watching the angled cable, movement can be seen as grass is disturbed further down the angled portion from the reeling in. Then the line vibrates as it meets resistance and emits a twang from the recoil. Subject's camera pans back along the length of the cable, 
which now appears to be slowly allowing more slack before suddenly all slack is returned and pulley system begins again. Control requests subject return following cable path and screams are caught on the audio with panic from the subject. Five shots are fired as subject aims pistol at something not visible on camera. Control reports being able to see subject returning towards point of origin while camera shows wire disappearing into a point floating in the air. As subject passes this point, all cable is now in the pulley system and camera films only the floor. Control reports that the mirror took approximately 5 seconds to return to a reflection and SCP-093 remained blue in color until one hour after being recovered from subject. A vile smelling fluid was present on subject's clothes around his hands when firearm was recovered. This fluid dried quickly and was deemed insignificant of study due to lack of quality sample. Control personnel monitoring the mirror state having seen a massive human being crawling on the ground easily 50 times the size of a normal person with no facial features and a very short arm reach pulling itself toward the mirror before it returned to a reflection. Due to proximity, fine details could not be made out, but at least one observer noted the being appeared to have been shot from the marks in the otherwise smooth, featureless face. Field test kit recovered from a subject containing a newspaper article that reads Data expunged and was filed as item Data expunged. The next test is classified as the green test.